The unmistakable sound of the gong has held spiritual significance in Southeast Asia for centuries. Hand-beaten from sheet materials, the labour-intensive shaping and delicate paintwork result in beautiful percussive instruments. Souvenir gongs can be bought for just a few dollars, but large, finely tuned gongs made from the best materials can fetch tens of thousands of dollars. So what are gongs actually used for, and why are they so expensive? This is Thailand's Gong Highway, a 21-mile stretch of road that is home to more than 50 family-owned gong companies, who collectively produce roughly 7,000 gongs each year. In the heart of the Gong Highway is Bunrak Sisinaha's workshop. As a third-generation gong maker, Bunlak has been studying and practicing gong making for almost 50 years. <laughs> การทําของพ่อและปู่ย่าตายายมาตั้งแต่เล็กๆแต่ 6 ขวบครับตรงจนปัจจุบันนี่นะครับก็ชอบการทําของเพราะว่าno materials go to waste here. Even the offcuts are used to make the largest shape possible. It's at this early stage where the eventual cost of each gong is determined. ความถูกความแพงนี่เนี่ยนะว่าเราต้องการใบเล็กใบใหญ่หรือว่าต้องการวัตถุดิบครับถ้าวัตถุดิบเป็นเนื้อเหล็กมันก็จะถูกถ้
and symphony orchestras. The largest non-Asian gong manufacturer is Peisty, based in Germany. It's been producing gongs since 1906, and its largest gong, an 80-inch symphonic model, retails for around $27,000. This type of flat face gong, sometimes referred to as a tam-tam, gives more of a crash sound, which is different from the tuned tones of a bossed gong. Peisty's method for producing gongs are more scientific than those on the gong highway with acoustic testing equipment used to evaluate the gong's frequency. But the quality and traditional craftsmanship at Bunlak's workshop is clear to see, and the historical importance of the gong is felt throughout Southeast Asia. หรือคนเขาอยากทําบุญสะเดาะเคาะพวกนี้เขาก็ซื้อไปถวายวัดครับคือเสียงกองวานนะครับกองวานแล้วก็เสียงยาวแล้วก็ตีไปเนี่ย